My uh, graduation project was called Thunderdome, and I created this, this huge uh, nightclub, uh, and, um, and we had a group of seven people, uh, graphic designers, environmental designers, and, uh, uh, and me, and uh, it was a great project. Uh, back then, uh, we had SGI, we were the first class to use uh, Alias and uh, 3D software. And, um, and um, we, we didn't have CDs back then. We had a thing called PsyQuests. And, uh, <laughs> and therefore, um, and these PsyQuests, they reside in Germany right now. And so I couldn't get them over here in time. And so therefore, you cannot, uh, I cannot share that image with you. <laughs> and sorry, but um, uh, it's funny that image uh, or that project looks very much alike. Um, and uh, it, it's, it shares the same design principles uh, that uh, Joe actually uh, applied to that scooter, a very simple uh, design language uh, that I loved uh, to Im apply uh, back then. And I uh, have to say that I didn't know Joe back then, um, or I knew of this project, and I got to know him uh, at Art Center here in America. So after we graduated um, in 94, um, it brings us to um, getting to real life getting the picture, this is our second stage. And this brings us to our um, second dot. Actually, it's not a dot, it's a square. You probably know or heard of IDEO, a company in the Bay Area, uh, a product design consultancy in the Bay Area, now uh, more or less uh, a, stra a strategic uh, uh, company. And um, they are about 600 people now worldwide. And uh, uh, Joe and I started there uh, in 95, I believe, in San Francisco. We work with designers like Naoto Fukusawa, Sam Hecht, uh, and a lot of people who work at Apple uh, right now. And it was uh, really great to share um, their kind of uh, design spirit back then. Uh, so we grew up all in this kind of uh, multidisciplinary um, uh, mindset. Um, Later on, uh, uh, human factors joined the teams, uh, uh, engineering and all this, strategic people and all this. Uh, for the people who heard about IDEO, I'm not going to hold a, a, a talk much about IDEO, but it was a very, very great environment to learn. And that's why we got the picture there, and we, 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 we kind of applied that picture to a lot of products, and a lot of clients from all over the world came to us. And I want to show you a few examples. Um, you probably own that product or have uh, owned that. Um, this was uh, first generation for Western Digital, my book. Um, Western Digital was back then number five hard drive producer in the US. Now that with my book, it became number one. Uh, I was directly involved in the f generation one. Then they wanted me to do generation uh, two. And we also did my passport. And then we also did um, the whole packaging, everything. Um, the whole brand uh, identity, and then the next slide, and that looked like this. Then in the end, that's a, 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 a shot from uh, Best Buy, the retail display. We also worked on the first digital uh, TV for Thomson. Uh, they got bought by Sony, so that uh, kind of got uh, scrapped. And then the next one, uh, peripherals for Intel. Um, this was before Apple, uh, that, um, that uh, MP3 player. I'm proud to say that I'm I have a, I'm, I'm holding a patent on that uh, MP3 player. We will notice it doesn't have a stop button, so I'm holding a, a patent on the lack of a stop button <laughs> on an MP3 player. <laughs> because, because uh, you know, a stop button is a mechanical thing, and uh, MP3 players don't need that really. It's a digital thing, and so I, ha I hold the patent. <laughs> And then, and then, and then uh, this thing came out, um, it was sold at Virgin, and then another thing came out at that same time, it's called the internet, and then this thing was killed. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really cool. And then, Joe, you... I can you, talk about this. You know um, we, uh, we did a lot of gaming devices at IDEO. Um, it, they weren't just fun projects to, uh, to work on, but uh, very interesting in terms of uh, interacting with uh, your hands and how to manipulate something in, in 3D or in a game or in, a, in, a, in an airplane. So it was really um, hands-on figuring out the, the right ergonomics and the right feel. And um, we put interesting technology into it. Um, the upper project is actually um, started um, as, a, as a final thesis project here. And after we started at IDEO, um, Logitech came back and wanted us to actually put it into production. And this was the production piece. 
Um, we did that through IDEO then, and then um, also worked on a lot of um, steering wheels. This was a force feedback steering wheel, first of its kind. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, pocket mist for Pfizer. Uh, you probably used that or have seen that. Next. Um, a pure air purifier for Kowei. It's sold under Auric here in the US and it's a mega hit in, the, in Russia, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, worked for Nike. Um, this was one of the first series um, into, into equipment, Nike equipment, and we worked on a lot of um, different pairs of glasses for runners. This was a trail running glass glasses and um, it had to cover a lot of the, um, the eye or the face and um, what's cool is they were actually just hinged in the middle and the rest of it is actually just floating. So this was for air ventilation. And then um, after that uh, we worked on a lot of watches for Nike. Um, these watches were the first watches with, uh, with the um, curved LCD display to make the uh, profile absolutely thin, as thin as possible back then. Uh, that's, that's a laptop for ASUS. Uh, if you are industrial designer, laptops are kind of the, the, the top of the notch, uh, the, the, the top of the class. Um, you have to do so many, uh, recognize so many things, uh, and there's so much stuff in there. Um, and um, this, I hold a patent on the first um, a mouse pad without a parting line. Uh, you can see there's no parting line down there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, a 360 degree conference uh, camera. Um, yep. And on the side, um, we, we had this, uh, this group of philosophers. Um, these are all uh, product designers from the Bay Area. Some work at Apple, some work at Motorola, some are still at IDEO. And we created this, uh, this, uh, this design uh, group called Design Raw, and we went to uh, furniture fairs like Milano, 100% Design, or to the Totem Gallery in New York, um, and we exhibited these machines, and uh, we would um, display pictures. You would select a reason why you want to become a designer. You would push a button, and then an object would come out the machine, and we would fa prefabricate these objects, of course, and then there would these objects come out and we would be, be, be behind the machine and make noise and then people would have these objects and they go away and they're happy. And it was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the cool thing was that um, back at IDEO you're so much into your client work and you always needed to find some sort of balance and uh, it's great that um, a few guys got together from different offices and could actually explore something completely different that's not client based. And then a, a company like Whirlpool actually came to en engage with Design Raw to, to design a, a, a washing machine. And we had this idea of having this huge stencil coming from the top and just <laughs> pushing uh, the clothes, you know, pushing them. And they were really excited and they <laughs> built this prototype. <laughs> So after, or actually while Marcus stayed on at IDEO, um, I, I, I was working for a lot of brands and we both worked for a lot of big brands and um, I always had this itch to become independent. So the first step to independence was actually creating another design consultancy on my own with uh, another partner, Kathy Bailey, who is now, um, well, it was called One, one and Company. Some of you might know, and um, the company got acquired by HTC. It's now HTC Design. And uh, Kathy went into her own thing doing um, Heath Ceramics now. And um, I, at the same time, I started uh, one in company with her. I also started another company um, called Incase, which some of you may know. Um, Want to talk about Incase? Um, a little bit. We uh, this was actually we we were all still living at um, in in like a roommate situation with uh, a bunch of IDEO guys. We lived together and had uh, some other roommates with us, but this was our apartment up there. So, in case was actually founded up there. It wasn't in a garage, but Not it was in a garage. That's was the garage. A few level, <laughs> few levels we up. I found it up there. <laughs> fast fast forward. It in case. Um, started very small, um, started it with another art center friend of ours, um, Bobby Chang. 
And um, fast forwarding 10 years later, or now it's actually 15 years old, um, we, have, we have a lot of um, uh, strong footholds in different geographic areas. We have offices there, but also um, have great partnerships with um, other companies. We uh, developed in, in, in one year up to 150 styles, 50, 150 unique products. We had such a big product range over the years where it got, got to a lot of SKUs. These unique styles actually turned into more like 600 SKUs at one point. This was a lot of product. And um, this was a snapshot of the uh, San Francisco office. We designed the office. Everything custom. Everything custom made. Um, worked on the uh, DJ booth there, was, which was very important. <laughs> Custom made the uh, the table. You can talk about the uh, the largest table. Korean table, not Korean, Korean, the, the white <laughs> material Korean table in the in in California. Yep. <laughs> uh, and that is uh, since from from IDEO, I, I led a studio of uh, 30 designers uh, in 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 my position as a design director. Uh, we had we we had the studio. We we decided every wall needs to be kind of writable, uh, and so every wall changed every day, and so we we kind of translated that into in, in case, and then, uh, or I should say, I, I joined in case as well uh, when Joe so after moved to San Francisco. After about yeah. ten years into in case, I I convinced Marcus this this yeah. is going to be really good and yeah. um, please join us and we were in the time back at the time we had our offices here in LA right. and uh, I wanted to go back to San Francisco and uh, reconnect and we wanted to open up in spec in a studio here or up in San Francisco and uh, we were lucky to uh, bring Marcus in yeah. to help us and so then um, I, I introduced uh, amongst other things I introduced this uh, restroom and uh, that is uh, all like a ch chalkboard and so in this restroom you could leave your note and which uh, kind of got us in trouble in the first year. Uh, uh, after one year and about two months we had, a, we, 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 we had to employ an HR department, a person. <laughs> <laughs> we had to start to, keep to us think in about line. that. Uh, uh, and we learned very quickly that uh, we have to educate our employees uh, because <laughs> if you're by yourself in a restroom with a piece of chalk, uh, you have uh, even the, the you know, you have, Amongst very creative people, you do very creative things, and <laughs> some people don't like it. And then, you know, we have to. We went through a few stages here as well. <laughs> I wanted to show you a few products. Um, I think we, we have to go faster. We worked in at in <laughs> we, we run through it very fast. Sorry. So, you might have seen this product um, the uh, first kind of neoprene sleeve with a felt inside or a fur inside. These were some backpacks that we did, a um, lot of different styles, worked with a lot of different artists and collaborators on graphics. This was a collaboration with John Mayer, Fender Hard Case. We did a bunch of other um, soft goods cases for him. And uh, very iconic, the uh, in-case slider, one of the first um, plastic or hard, hard molded cases. And then, um, we try to be very uh, uh, exploring different areas in, in, in cases with so little, um, I guess, flexibility, with so much little space. We try to be very innovative. And um, this is the uh, perf case that we've designed. It's very complicated to make. Yeah, we introduce craftsmanship into mass production. You know, not it like these. This is uh, eight sliders. If you know a little bit about mass production, eight sliders, that tool is really difficult to make. And it is just a headache to make all these holes or to create that tool in itself in 3D as well. Or this. This is like punching, with a computer punching these things in there. It's tough. We worked on a lot of uh, iPad cases, a um, lot of um, innovation there as well. This was actually, we were um, the first case that had um, this kind of mechanical stand. Before Apple. <laughs> Shh. Uh, we have a patent on that too. <laughs> uh, one, of, one of the uh, products that we're really proud of uh, before we left InCase was this uh, luggage collection. Um, they all had integrated laptop compartments and other accessory compartments. It's now available. Uh, different rollers, backpack, 
duffel bags and a backpack. And then we also explored um, electronics at InCase, which was great. It's uh, both of Marcus's and mine background. Um, this is up there is the one of the uh, or the most uh, successful um, car charger for iPhone. And here are some battery cases. And then also we are proud of um, having worked on the uh, uh, audio line for InCase, which uh, included um, over-ear, on-ear, and um, in-ear headsets. So you see kind of a thread, like a design thread. Um, going through the whole line. We try to keep uh, things very simple, the mechanical parts um, as hidden as possible. And here are some other things. So, on the weekends. Uh, we started a, a, a jewelry line called Manimals.com. Check them out, Manimals.com. It's hanging animals. This is a sloth here. Um, there's a koala, there's a, a boa constrictor, a bat, and a, and, uh, and a gorilla. They're just hanging animals. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we also started to do larger projects. We worked on a, a tea store where we designed the whole experience, not only the, uh, the interior of the uh, cans, but also uh, what people are wearing inside and um, the whole experience around it. Which gets us to stage four. Um, uh, cognito ergo sum. I don't know how many people speak Latin, but it directly translated means uh, I think, therefore I am. And I don't think this is the right translation. It's more like I uh, recognize myself and therefore I recognize the reason why I'm here on this planet and what I'm doing. So I'm getting to know myself and uh, therefore I'm doing what I'm doing. And so, um, and that's, that's where we are at right now. Uh, we are recognizing what we are doing and uh, we are recognizing that there's a pattern in, in, in our creative life and that pattern, uh, that pattern defines our experience. That pattern um, kind of recognizes uh, value, and that pattern creates, uh, we believe, creates um, uh, creates success. And um, and we think that pattern can be determined or defined by three principles. And uh, here we go. This is it. Um, the principles our also. We are almost at the end, but this is it. This is the candy. Our philosophy, three steps. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Humanize. Humanize, um, a nice Nien said, um, we, we, don't think as, we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. And this is about the relationship of the human being, you, and the object of the product, whether it's tangible or intangible. It's that relationship. And as a designer, you have to dive into that relationship, expand it, work in it, you know, see what you can do within that. And it's mostly an em emotional or even functional space. And you have to understand that space. The uh, second principle we call think beyond. Think beyond, um, here a nice quote from Henry Ford. When I asked people what they wanted to, to, when I asked people what they wanted, they asked for a faster horse. So think beyond is about uh, innovation. It's uh, thinking outside the box. It's about um, jumping over your own shadow. It's really exploring the, the boundaries and uh, constantly pushing what's, uh, what's possible. Yeah, it's about the new, not the now. And then searing in, I saw the angel inside and carved to set him free. Michelangelo said that. He stood in front of that big uh, piece of marble, white piece of marble, and saw Davide inside. And you have to think, um, he, um, he did not just got, he didn't get rid of the, that, uh, redundant, the redundancy of marble, that superfluous material, he, he emerged the essence of David uh, that he saw inside that piece of marble. So design is not a deductive process. It's For us, it's seeing something and emerging that essence and making sure that this essence um, gets, uh, gets um, kind of kept or prevailed at its, at its, in its purity. And uh, so, therefore, this, this, this principle is mostly about focus and, and just being bold about that statement that you're about to make. And if you take these three principles, they have to work in accordance and they, are, they have to be in balance with each other. And we don't think you can design anything um, uh, by missing, one of, missing out on one of these principles. They all have to be engaged, they all have to be activated. 
uh, more or less. And, um, and we also think that um, these principles apply to life, uh, to, to the way how you lead your life, um, we think. Right, Joe? That's more or less, <laughs> yes. So uh, we like to keep them in balance and we like to play around with them, but uh, turning them always kind of more towards full than, than not, uh, we think this is a great way of um, succeeding. And uh, more or less, this brings us to more or less. We, we left in case um, a couple of years ago or, or a year and a half ago. And we just wanted to highlight a couple of, or actually a couple of slides of a project that we really love um, that applied these principles. This is the uh, Soma water filter. And uh, the great thing about Soma, just a couple of words, um, Soma is, is uh, uh, involved in charity water. So every, every time someone, um, buys or someone drinks a filter, like a, uses a filter, um, you help um, people accessing clean drinking water. So that's a great, uh, really great company, a great brand. And uh, besides that, um, it's, uh, it's, it's very um, um, green. We use um, glass and uh, compostable plastics, so uh, the filter actually can be composed. And here, um, a few other things we're working on just to give you a snippet of what's uh, coming in the future. And that's it. We are, we are almost uh, at the end. <laughs> well, everything is a holistic approach. That's how we work. And uh, we would love to show you more work, but it's pretty confidential uh, as everything else in the Bay Area or you know, where we work. And uh, we work for small companies and we work for big companies. But we were thinking about a few last words uh, on the way over here. And we were thinking of how to describe, um, we, we didn't know what audience we're going to get, whether it's going to be, to be entrepreneurs or students or just human beings. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and then we were thinking, um, what, 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 what drove us all this way uh, to, to, to what we are and where we are right now? And we thought um, that without that passion that we, that we developed in the very early, in, in our childhood or on the very early stages or when we were here at Art Center. And that vision that, that, vision that we had to, to kind of translate all our ideas into something, um, we wouldn't have gotten here. And then the, the idea of you can't do this on your own, you need a partner somehow, like, uh, like I need Joe, or I need a legal partner sometimes, or I need uh, an, an office, or I need, uh, I need partners or companions on the way. I would never be where I'm, I am now, I would never stand here. So it's kind of all these, these, these components that, uh, that get us, or that get me and Joe where we are right now. That's what I thought. It's about sharing and uh, collaborating and opening up um, to, to other people that might be better at something that, that we can't do. I mean, we're both not uh, business people. We now have business experience. Um, but um, you, it's, it's nice to always share with other people that are better than you in, in other fields. So it's, uh, it's what we think makes actually a, a great work environment. And patents are always good to have. <laughs> <laughs> so we are more or less. Thank you very much. Thank you.